Hey ladies, it is Ashley Shepherd, and I'm excited to go over the last few chapters of Fervent with you tonight. I'm just going to give it a second as everybody hops on. <coughs> You'll have to excuse my allergies. Um, I'm allergic to horses. I'm pretty sure I was at the baseball fields tonight, and I think there's horses around, so I'm having a hard time breathing, but... Anyways, I will get through it. So, as everybody hops on, tell me what you're doing tonight. Um, actually, as you hop on, I would love to know how the Lord has spoke to you um, during this book. Not just these last few chapters, but like how has the Lord spoken to you through fervent? What has the Lord shown you? What was your favorite chapter? What was your favorite quote? Um... I would love to know, love, 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 love to know. So, um, we are going to dive in. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited about this particular last few chapters because it really did honestly speak to my heart <clears throat> in a couple different ways. Um, and um, really, to be honest with you, I have a couple of quotes to come from the book, but I'd love to just kind of share my heart with you on this particular um, topic. Um, as you can see, the topic is about forgiveness and how the enemy will um, really attack us when it comes to our relationships, and um, the enemy wants us to be in a state of defeat, um, but also in a state of offense. Um, he, you know, this particular chapter is, um, it's tough because this is the last few chapters that she talks about is things that we don't like to talk about out loud. We don't like to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, Hey, I'm really offended or, you know, I really can't forgive that person. And so honestly, these, these two chapters were a little bit hard. Um, it was tough for me reading through, knowing that there have been seasons in my life, even recent seasons, um, where I have turned bitter towards someone due to how they treated me. And so um, I'm just going to dive in. So the first chapter is on hurts, um, and then that's chapter nine, and then the tenth chapter is on relationships. And what I really want to share with you is she says at the very beginning of chapter nine, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm really having a hard time <clears throat> breathing, so I may have to do that a few times, but I'll try not to. Hey, Ash, um, if I were your enemy, I would use every opportunity to bring old wounds to mind as well as the people, events, and circumstances that caused them. I would try to ensure that your heart was hardened with anger and bitterness, shackled through unforgiveness. And this is just one one avenue, one nook and cranny um, that we leave open to our hearts and to our minds when it comes to being distracted. I truly believe that um, there can be just this spirit of offense and spirit of bitterness towards other people. And the enemy uses this feeling to come in to make us feel not good enough to bring back the past. Um, in my particular situation, um, it, it is bringing back the past. It is bringing back past hurts. And it's hard to view people in a different light. And remember that we are born into flesh. Like when Adam and Eve walked this earth and they ate the fruit off the tree they weren't supposed to eat off of, that, that they were the first sinners. We were all born into that. And so our fr fleshly desires, our fleshly nature is not to forgive. Our fleshly nature is to retaliate. Um, our fleshly nature is to um, get revenge, right? Um, when someone hurts us. And so I believe chapter 9 and 10 goes um, well together by talking about um, hurts and relationships because the Lord wants to unify you in every relationship you have. But the enemy wants to disunify and make sure that you have this discord, disconnect, um, and that you continue to be hurt and offended um, in these relationships, whatever relationship may be, spouse, parent, um, sister, brother, friend, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, I don't know, like, um, you know, I, I grew up, um, 
understanding and knowing that, um, I guess for me being a people pleaser, um, I grew up, you know, wanting to be liked, you know, force hugging everybody. And so I'll never forget like the first time I was hurt by one of my really good friends as a freshman year in high school. And, um, it was really hard. It was really hard to get over. And, um, I am actually walking through a current situation, um, with a person who I used to be friends with in the past. And there were some past circumstances and things that happened. And, the enemy wants me to be so bitter to that person. Like every time I see them or talk to them, what the enemy wants to do is to whisper those lies like, she doesn't like you. She talks about you all the time. She, can you believe that, you know, she did that to you the last time that you were with her? Or, you know, it's all of those lies. And in all reality, you know, her and everybody else is just trying to, you know, get through life and do the best they can and, you know, all of us, it's its easy for us to judge. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's easy for us to judge other people's intentions. And that's how the enemy comes in. Because we can what if a situation and judge their intentions and judge their words thinking, oh, she didn't really mean that. Or I can't believe she said that. Or did you see what she posted on Facebook? I bet that was about me. And so we can, we can harbor this bitterness towards other people. But it's so easy to do. We almost create a habit, kind of like eating chocolate at night when your family goes to bed and you're like, oh, I'm going to eat some chocolate. Nobody sees that I'm doing it, so it doesn't count, right? Well, that can become a habit, and you don't even know that you do it. And then your body will automatically get hungry at 9 o'clock at night because you've made a habit of feeding it. Okay, that is the same thing that the enemy wants to do with bitterness and anger. We can feed that just as much as we can grab that chocolate at nine o'clock. And so if we choose, if we make that choice to harbor these feelings for another person, regardless of what they did to you, some situations, just like she said in the book, is a lot worse than others. If we make that choice to harbor those feelings and feed that and think those thoughts and believe those lies from the enemy, we are going to live in a state of defeat we are going to exhaust ourselves to the point where we don't even know our purpose. Our identity is going to be lost in who we think that we are through these other people's eyes. Because ultimately, we seek validation from everybody, right? Like, we want everyone to like us. We want everyone to encourage us um, every day. I mean, we, we, we go through life wanting everyone to smile at us. I mean, typically... I mean, the normal person wants that. And so when you don't receive that or when you're hurt with some hurt by someone and we have the, these bitter feelings and this anger feelings and we don't understand, it, it's consuming. It's all consuming. And so we have a choice, right? This is what she says. Unforgiveness is a strategic design craftily implemented by your enemy to outwit you, to cripple your effectiveness in prayer and your power to stand against him. We can't stand against this power, this spirit of offense. We need Jesus, okay? We need Jesus. And I've shared this before on a live, but, you know, I have, I've had to call one of my mentors. They live in Texas. And we FaceTime <coughs> not too long ago about um, a relationship of mine that I was really hurt by. And I craved validation. I craved encouragement. And the reality is, is, you know, we have these expectations of people and then when we don't get it, our feelings are hurt, but we put those expectations on people. And, you know, in this particular situation, um, I was, I felt rejected from this person. And so, um, my prayer mentor took me on this prayer journey of forgiving them, forgiving them for, um, you know, not speaking to me or forgiving them for being rude to me or forgiving them for, um, you know, whatever it may be. And I just, I prayed this prayer and I released it to the Lord. And that's what God wants us to do. We were never meant to carry this burden of anger and bitterness. We were never meant to carry it. It's always meant to be His. But as women, we are control freaks. We try to hang on to it and we try to fit it in our lives, right? Like, it's like when you're wearing a bunch of bags coming in from the grocery store trying to come into the house because I hate making trips. Like, I'll kill myself trying to bring in all the groceries, right? And so I try to make it all fit. And that's what we try to do. 
we try to control the situation. We try to make it fit. And at the end of the day, we end up being exhausted and run down with those, the, with the, with the thoughts, with the lies, with that feeling of just bitterness and knowing that there's a situation out there that you can't control. And maybe, maybe you are being misunderstood. Okay, so when I went through this process of just praying and just forgiving them, and then I said a prayer of blessing over them and their families, and I just prayed that the Lord would bless their family, and that I prayed favor favor over them, um, and I blessed and released them. And here's my heart in all of this is to show you that we go through situations like this where we have to let go of bitter and angerness to. Know what it looks like to solely depend on God. Because if I didn't go through this situation recently, then, I mean, I have read my Bible more. I have prayed more. I have sought the Lord and and just really talked to God. Like, Lord, you know, I may see this person this week. Please, you know, protect my heart, protect my mind against any kind of bitterness. Um, You know, give me strength, Lord. And I go to Him way more often. And so I'm grateful. I'm so grateful um, that I had to go through a relationship hurt to know what it looks like to be solely dependent on my Savior. And one thing that my prayer mentor said really touched my heart. And I've said it on here before, but I can't remember when it was or how long ago it was. Maybe you weren't listening then. But my prayer mentor said this, Ashley, Jesus died for them too. And although they may not be walking with the Lord, maybe they don't know the Lord, maybe they are just being disobedient, or let's just be real, they're just being flesh. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, I mean, have you ever, um, you know, have you ever talked about somebody? Have you ever gossiped about somebody? Or have you ever, you know, none of us are perfect, right? And so when we're hurt, we harbor it in. But the reality is, is, nobody's perfect. And so at the end of the day, you have to know that Jesus died for them too. And you have a choice and you have a choice to focus on what you can control. And that's how you react to the situation. And honestly, ladies, it really comes to this. What are we expecting in our lives? Because the world wants to say one thing, you know, expect hurt, expect, you know, people to be mean and There's this worldly view, but then there's this view where when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the Holy Spirit comes in your life, you can be expectant for the Lord to work everything to to the good for those that love Him. That is Romans 8, 28. What the enemy means for bad, God is going to turn to the good. And so my heart in sharing, you know, a little bit of, of just that part of my story and forgiving this person and not harboring bitterness when I feel rejected. Look at Jesus. He was super rejected. I mean, they killed him. Man killed him. And when I look at how sweet our Jesus is and knowing that he experienced all the same emotions, all the same rejections, all the same, um, I can't imagine, you know, he didn't harbor that bitterness. Now, we're not Jesus, right? Like, we're not Jesus, <laughs> meaning we can't walk around this earth and be perfect and not sin, right? Like, we're not Jesus. So, we do have that fleshly desire, but we have Jesus in our hearts. We have him at all times through the Holy Spirit. And so, we have to communicate. We have to talk to the Lord, just like I'm talking to you, and ask the Lord to take away the bitterness, take away the anger. Now, it's not a flip switch, right? Like, when you turn a light on, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, When there's a history, and there's a past, and there's deep wounds and hurts, it takes a lot of time for the Lord to help heal those wounds. And I said this one week too during fervent, when Jesus died on the cross and he resurrected three days later and he appeared to the disciples, guess how he showed them that it was truly him. He showed him his scars on his hands. Jesus had scars from man. We're going to have scars from man, period. We're going to be hurt, period, at the end of the day until we are um, in heaven with him It just, it's, it's, we are in the world right now, but we have to be expectant that the Lord is going to turn everything to his good and that he loves us so much. And so when you are going through a hurt 
or a, a, a season of unforgiveness. You have to choose Jesus over, over being bitter. You have to choose Jesus. And it is, you, it's hard because bitter is a feeling and so we can feel bitter, but Jesus is not necessarily a feeling, but Jesus is our source. He's our source. And when I, when I, what I mean by that is when you're hungry, you go eat food. When you're thirsty, you go to the source. You go drink water, right? When you, um, when you get tired, you go lay down. You, you, when you have a need that needs to be fulfilled, you go to that source. When you have bitter and angerness, Jesus is the source of life that can give you a new heart, a new perspective. It says, in the Bible that the Lord will renew your mind, okay? Renew your mind. And here's the deal. The person that you are bitter and angry about, they may always live in the darkness and they may never accept your forgiveness, but that doesn't matter. What matters is your heart, your relationship with the Lord, and knowing that you are seeking Him and you are keeping your eyes fixed on Him and that you have forgiven the person that hurt you. And you have blessed and released. Bless and release. And sometimes it's a continual thing. When you feel that bitterness come up, pray, bless and release. Pray, bless and release. And let it go. Because the Lord says that he wants to carry our burdens. And that is a big burden. That the enemy wants you so weighed down that you can't see God's provision. That's the enemy's goal. But the Lord says in John 10, 10, that there's an enemy to kill, steal, and destroy, but destroy. But God says, but I've come to give you life, but to give it to you abundantly. Abundantly, ladies, that's the provision. And so although the enemy is going to use these hurts in your life, look at God's provision for your life. And that provision is to give you a life abundantly. And so... So we have a choice of whether we are going to live by our feelings, which our feelings can deceive us, and the Bible says our heart even deceives us, or we can go to the source of life, okay, the source of life. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in bitterness and anxiety and anxious thoughts. I want to live my life to the fullest. I want to live my life through God's provision in and here's the thing, you know, life is short. Life is so short. And we were we were created to live free. And that's kind of what I want to end on tonight. We were created to live free. When you have anger and bitterness, it is a bondage. It's all consuming. But when Jesus died on that cross, he died for you. Ultimate hero. You will never have anybody die for you. I mean, think about that. And, and I mean, number one, he died for you, but then he rose again in three days. So he's alive right now and he's interceding for you and he loves you so much. And so his blood has covered all of our sin, but his blood has covered all of other people's sin, not just us, everybody on the universe. And so when you look at a situation or a person, ask God, because this is not natural. Ask God for, for the Lord to help you see that person through God's eyes. Having those spiritual lenses and saying, you know what? My flesh, like this is the real Ashley Shepherd coming out. My flesh wants to punch you in the face, right? Like my flesh is frustrated and I'm angry and I'm hurt. That is what my flesh says and, and, and naturally wants to do. But Jesus, I'm a follower of Christ and I can let that go and not live by my feelings, but choose to live and love like Christ did when he was on this earth. And I want to encourage you, you ladies to, um, you know, open up your Bible, read the book of John, read the story of Jesus's ministry, read the, the character of Jesus. And we can call upon the name of the Lord. We can ask the Holy Spirit who is in John 14, 6 says that he is our helper and we can ask him, Lord, help me see this person the way you see. Help me not live my life by my feelings. Help me not be deceived by the enemy. And help me see people the way you see them. Because life is too short. We were born to be free. We were created to have a freedom. 
Jesus wants you to break those chains of angerness and bitterness and continue to go to him, the source, the number one source of our strength, for our, number one source for love, number one source for when we're hungry and we're lacking and we're thirsty. We can choose that, ladies. We can be healed from angerness and bitterness. We can completely be healed. And so I do want to end with some of my favorite scriptures. Um, and I love the, the, this one quote on page 174. The peace of God is what helps us navigate the will of God. You were born to have a peace in your life. Even with a bad circumstance and, a, and a, a past hurt in your life, you can still experience God's peace. If you go to the source, you have to go to him. Joanna, we can't, we can't do it on our own. It is only through Jesus that we can do it. And you know how I know that? Because there's a scripture in Mark where, and it's the parable, which I'm actually going to share this at our women's conference Saturday. So I don't want to give, I know some of you women are going to be there, but um, in Sevierville, and if you're in Sevierville, come to Jones Chapel Baptist Church on Saturday night because I'm speaking and we have amazing worship and free desserts. And um, there, he, here's how I know this, Okay. And I, I'm going to share this really quick because I don't want to. I don't want to go into too much detail because I'm going to share it Saturday night. But there's a parable in Mark, and it's it's. Um, I can't remember the scripture exactly, but you'll find it when you flip through Mark. But it is the. Um, it's when Jesus during Jesus's ministry there was a man and his son had an unclean spirit, and it was an awful unclean spirit. And it said that this unclean spirit would like you know, put them in fire and water. And here's the deal. Like we don't have unclean spirits like controlling our life, right? Well, guess what? Bitterness and anger is a thing that is controlling our life. And so enter that for this unclean spirit. And this man is so desperate for his son to be healed. And so he says, Jesus, Jesus, will you heal him? Will you heal him? And Jesus looks at him and he says, everything is possible. Everything is possible through me. If you believe in me, all things are possible. That's what he said. All things are possible if you believe in me. And do you know what that man said? The man said, I do believe, but Jesus help my unbelief. Now, what I love about that scripture is that man, he, he was honest about his neediness, right? He was honest about that neediness. He said, he said, I do believe, but I still have some unbelief. That is where we have to be honest with God and say, Lord, just like Joanna, that question, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. Help my unbelief because I know if I believe in you, if you can die on the cross and, raise, and be raised from the dead and, and, and you can do all of these things that you do for us and you have, you have, you have done every promise in the Bible that you said you were going to do and you continue to do that. We have to trust and believe in that. But we also have to be honest with the Lord. And without that neediness, we wouldn't need a Savior, right? And so if you are hanging on to that bitterness, I tell God, Lord, this is where I'm lacking in belief that, that you can actually help me forgive this person. And so that is where that is where you communicate with the Lord. And that is a full surrender. Lord, I give it to you. Help my unbelief. And Jesus healed the little boy of the unclean spirit. But it doesn't stop there. It continues on. And so after he heals this boy, thank you, Sarah, Mark 9. After he heals this boy, he go, him and the disciples, I can't remember what it says. They go in another room. And the disciples are kind of frustrated. And they were like, we tried to heal this. Un, we tried to get this unclean spirit out and it wouldn't work. It would not work. How come that you were able to deliver this unclean spirit? And do you know what he said? That kind of miracle, that kind of unclean spirit needed to be casted out only through prayer. Only through prayer. And so that is an action step that, you know, like I said, we don't have an unclean spirit, but that bitterness and angerness is a bondage that kind of gets stuck in there. And it's very controlling of our actions and controlling of our feelings and of where we're at and our, whether we're victorious or defeated, right? And so Jesus is sharing through that miracle of how he took that unclean spirit out and he said, I did that, but it's only through prayer. Ladies, we have got to be on our knees. That's what you learned in Fervent. We've got to be on our knees praying to the Lord 
to help us forgive, help us to not be bitter, help us to 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 seek that um, to 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 it's really fully surrendering, right? And it's communication. You can't grow any relationship without communication, and that's the same with your relationship with Jesus Christ. And here's the deal, ladies. I want to grow my relationship with Jesus Christ more than I want to grow any relationship ever on this earth. Because I know that if I do that, I'm going to have the right heart. I'm going to have the right perspective. And when I do mess up and, and lash out or get angry or get frustrated, I know that I can go to the source. I can go back to the source of life. And 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 he is going to help me shift a little bit, right? Because I'm going to sin all the time. Ladies, I'll be honest with you. I was frustrated at a situation at church last night. At church. And my sister looked at me and she's like, you need Jesus. And I was like, I do need some Jesus. Um, And then I go home and Levi has this horrible meltdown and he's screaming and I can't calm him down. I have to call my husband and deal with it over the phone. And I was just so weary last night. And that's when I picked up the Bible. And that's when the Lord showed me Mark 9. And I read that scripture last night where he said, Lord, help my unbelief. That was my prayer last night. Lord, help my unbelief where I don't believe that that this situation can be different. But through Christ, he can heal you and he can free you. Not only that, ladies, you are already free. You know that, right? When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're already free. Your sins are forgiven. You are washed white as snow. And as you're discipled and grow in your relationship with the Lord, you can live free. You can live free from all of this. And it's just like when you're so thirsty and when you're so hungry, you're like, can't stand it and you drink a glass of water and you just feel that quench that's what the Holy Spirit that's what God does to our souls right and so you know to pray because sometimes I don't like to pray about things oh Joanna girl let me tell you how I pray this is how I pray this is how I prayed last night this is what I said okay I'm gonna be real with you so I'm gonna give you a real example and then I'll close out here because I know um, it's getting a little bit late but I'll stay on and answer any any other questions but literally this is my prayer Lord I am frustrated. That's what I told God last night. Lord, I am frustrated. I am tired. And I told God, not he didn't know. I said, my husband's been gone for about seven days minus about five hours. My kids are acting crazy. I'm exhausted. I am feeling so weary. Um, I am feeling like I don't know how to parent my six-year-old. I don't even know how to parent him. I'm frustrated with people at church because of a situation and I need help. Lord, like help me. I am, I am, my flesh is very angry. I am frustrated. And I told Jesus I was frustrated. He knew. I didn't have to tell him. But I I talk, I talk to him just like I would talk to you. And I just said, Lord, I, I give me some kind of scripture. And I opened up my Bible to Mark 9. And that's when I read about um, help my unbelief. Um, yes, I love that, Alicia. Talk to him just like it was your dad sitting in a room or your friend or a sister. Um, and the Lord was so sweet to me last night because after I read that scripture in Mark and I prayed and you know what? I asked the Lord to forgive me for my attitude at church. I was like, Lord, I had a bad attitude about the situation. Just forgive me. Forgive my bad attitude. And I asked for forgiveness. And guess what? I was forgiven last night because I I sought out forgiveness and God forgave me like that. The Lord forgave me like that. You see, when we ask for forgiveness, we don't have to prove anything to Jesus. And you know, here's what I love about Jesus. We have nothing to prove. He loves us because he loves us because he loves us because he loves us. He created us for him. And so when we do something like being frustrated at church over a situation, which is so silly, right? But I'm human and I made a mistake. I was frustrated, right? And so I asked for forgiveness last night and the Lord forgave me. And guess what? It was over. I didn't I didn't allow a continued bitterness or anger to continue to mingle. I asked for forgiveness. I thanked Jesus for forgiving me and I moved on. And I opened up the word of God 
and I let that fuel me, right? Because we can allow our minds to fuel us and the world to fuel us and social media, media to fuel us, or we can allow the word of God to fuel us. You have a choice. It's like when we go to the gas pump and you have a regular car, you're not going to put the wrong kind of gas into your car to fuel it. It's going to, it's going to, you know, break down. It's going to make a noise. It's going to start stinking. It's the same concept as, as women. If we are fueling our, our minds and our hearts with, um, with what the world says we should do or be, then we're going to poop out. We're going to stink. Um, and so we have an opportunity to allow the Lord to, to do that. And um, I think I missed her last question here. Um, I love that, Nicole. Our mind and our heart need to align. Help our unbelief. Um Joanna, you know how I know he answers you? I will, let me give you a book. Um, it is Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Schreier. Priscilla Schreier took me on a journey. We did it as a group um, last year, maybe a year or two years ago. And it, it helps you learn how to hear God's voice. Um, and to be honest, um, you, it's, it's, a, it's a piece. And, and the Bible says that when we seek forgiveness, he forgives us. And so I believe the truth of the Bible. So when you read scripture and you start to know scripture and you start to, to dive into reading more scripture, then you start to realize the character and the love of Christ. And so that's how you know it's his voice. He is a loving God. He is a kind God. He's a good, good father. And so any of those attributes and characters are always from the Lord. Right, but if you're having feelings of you know bitterness and angerness and frustration or jealousy, like that is not of the Lord. Okay, that is from the enemy or, or maybe the world. What the world says, um, and so we've got. That's why we have to read the Word of God. Um, and so the book is "Discerning the Voice of God" by Priscilla Schreier. Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Schreier. And she goes through different ways to hear his voice. But it's more of a peace. And here's the thing, Joanna. God's already forgiven you. If you are struggling to forgive yourself, then you just need to talk to God. He will give you that peace. But you have to seek it out. We have to be in, we have to have an active faith. We have to communicate. And, um, and so I know if you don't, I mean, look, if you don't like to read, you got to read anyway. You got, you've got to make the choice to be in the word of God. And that's the only way you're going to be filled up. I mean, you can't drive your car and get on E and be like, well, I don't like to pump gas. Well, you have to pump gas if you want to get to the next destination. And so we have to, we have to pursue, um, reading his word, maybe start with Psalms. Read a psalm a day or a proverbs a day. There's what? There's 31 proverbs. There's usually 31 days of the month ish. Um, and so reading a proverbs a day and gaining that wisdom. So, um, yes, Frequency by Robert Morris is a great book too. Um, so I love you, ladies, and and I'm gonna close this study out. Um, I hope that you heard my heart, and and um, I know it went a little bit long tonight, but. Um, we are excited about what we're going to be launching this summer, and so I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you on Sunday night at um, 9 p.m., I'm going to come to you live, and I'm going to announce what we're going to be doing this summer. Now, the thing with this summer, there's no book study. Um, there's, you know, there's going to be some live videos and stuff like that, um, but what we're going to do this summer is it, we are going to put you into action, right? And so we are not just called to um, to 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 just read our Bibles and to 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 learn about Christ. We are called to put our faith in action. And so we have a fun challenge for you, ladies. It's going to last all summer, and. <clears throat> you have an opportunity to be a part of this. This is going to be a nationwide thing, just like Back the Blue um, is a nationwide thing, which Back the Blue is coming this fall, so stay tuned for that, where we support our local police officers. This will be our third annual Back the Blue nationwide thing, so that'll be exciting. But um, this summer, we can't wait to launch it. So Sunday night at 9 p.m., Okay, we want you to to hop on live and we will go over um, what we're launching for the summer. You're going to be super excited about it and you're going to want to involve your whole family, your kids or your nieces or your nephews, just any kids down the street. Like this is going to be super fun for everybody. So um, I love you ladies. I appreciate you just learning what it means to pray and learning what it 
looks like to get on your knees and talk to your heavenly daddy because that's what he is. He is your heavenly daddy. And um, this summer I'm finishing up the 30-day uh, devotion, the daily jewel devotion that's going to be coming out soon this fall. So there's just so many exciting things coming. Um, so please be in prayer for this beautifully designed ministry team, our amazing new intern Haley and Nicole's joined our team. And so we're excited about all of that. Um, and it's just going to be exciting. So Sunday night, 9 p.m. live. I will go all over, I'll go over all the details that we're going to be doing this summer. Um, and then we will launch back the blue coming up soon. So I love you ladies and y'all be blessed.